Good morning. It's May 11th at uh, 2022 at 848 my, my time. And uh, in the ongoing saga of the race to the bottom and the circus of lies that our country has become, it's just overwhelming to see how the playing field and the general public and the general sort of, I don't know, atmosphere of ideas and positioning and how things are formulated um, is reaching predictable levels, but in a sense that a lot of stuff seems to be being revealed on a daily basis if you want to understand what to look for and where to look. So the big convergence of what's happening right now is really, I think, starting at the mainstream level, okay? So the mainstream level is going to be speaking pretty much ad nauseum about the midterms. The midterms are going to play out between the Trump side, which is going to be continuing the push of the so-called big lie and, uh, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> the election being stolen from Trump. And uh, on the left, it's going to be pretty much the abortion situation with uh, the Supreme Court. And, you know, I tapped into both mainstream uh, apparatuses, both right, left, indifferent, center, central, whatever you want to call it, to kind of get a taste of what's going on out there. And it's, it's amazing um, and predictable, but just ridiculously stupid across the board. But, you know, on the right, you've got like this shock and awe that, uh, you know, there are protesters out in front of Judge Alito's house. Uh, given the decision and everything else and all the hoopla that comes with it and the nasty names that are being thrown at the people that are protesting called hoodlums and, you know, they're a threat and they're disgusting and they disparage them and all of these types of things. Meanwhile, of course, the same voices are very encouraging of what took place in the nation's capital during the insurrection. And, uh, you know, but to that point, I mean, the whole thing about Trump and the, and, 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 and the big lie is election stealing, right? In, 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 in the big outcry on, uh, you know, the anti-Trumpers at the moment is, my God, where's the Department of Justice coming down on uh, criminal prosecutions of what led to the insurrection? I mean, it's it's obvious. There, there's so much evidence in, in all of these different scenarios that uh, Trump was deeply involved with organizing things that are illegal. And, uh, you know, I mean, you, you know, to me, when I look back at January 6th, you could have seen that thing coming if you were blind. I mean, it was all over the Internet. We saw people from all over the country showing up at Trump's hotel, you know, in, in, in advance of that. And I think if anybody was looking, you know, particularly in the intelligence agencies in the United States, it, would have been, been, it wouldn't have been hard after all the stuff that went on in the riots during Black Lives Matter and the stuff that went on with that photo op with Trump walking across the mall with the, you know, the military shooting rubber bullets – um, and everything like with, you know, the Blackwater guys, you know, the no name tags and, and these like unmarked, uh, you know, military, uh, you know, deep state type people showing up, you know, at Black Lives Matter, throwing people into unmarked vans. I mean, the whole thing has been insane. Right. And it leads to, you know, uh, these ongoing revelations that it appears that those who are Trump supporters were deeply involved with all sorts of fraud. Uh, in, in basically lying on numbers themselves. And, you know, what I've learned long ago, and I learned this in, in the fraternity system, it's lie, deny, switch the blame, and implicate. And on top of that, you've got, you know, unbelievable evidence of documentation fabrication with, a, with regards to the election certifications. And so by all accounts, just on that alone, the Department of Justice ought to be actually indicting and uh, trying you know, President or former President Trump for all the laws that were broken. I mean, it, it's just unbelievable that there hasn't been a massive widespread sweep. But, you know, I will uh, turn the tables and I will ask both Trump supporters and anti-Trumpers at the same time that, OK, if you're going to be upset that the Department of Justice isn't going after Trump, well, then would you be upset if the Obama administration's Justice Department didn't go after Wall Street for basically setting up at least 50 million people, setting them up in a criminal enterprise so diabolical that was going to overwhelm the courts that led to millions upon millions. Well, first of all, there were millions upon millions of illegal loans that were used with documentation fabrication to get them approved through the whole pipeline that we show at the con, the con www.thecon.tv. 
every aspect of the crime that went through the entire system that blew up every single stopgap. The conspiracy was unbelievably mammoth, perpetrated by the CEOs of Wall Street because of modern executive compensation, and that's how they get paid. That's what we lay out the actual you know, case against Wall Street and the CEOs, and we show you every criminal aspect leading to and including the Federal Reserve. So we lost, you know, millions of people got destroyed in a criminal enterprise, completely illegal soup to nuts, and then in the aftermath, instead of indicting and convicting the, the CEO felons of Wall Street, we ended up showering them with $29 trillion to reset the trap, okay? And they've been doing it ever since. So the question is, if you're going to get pissed off about, I mean, what did Trump really do? I mean, that, that destroyed millions. Of, what he did was he just lied to try to steal the election. And if I said that like 10 years ago, I'd be like, oh, my God, that's fucking unbelievable. And it's huge. And it's what? But at the same time, in comparison, it's like a freaking gnat on the back of an elephant. Honestly, in, in comparison. So would I like to see Trump get indicted? Oh, yeah. Uh, and convicted? Oh, yeah. For a lot of things. Not just, I mean. His entire business model is on display in the con. It's control fraud. The Trump, uh, they hyperinflate their assets to loan against, for one, that's called control fraud. And then they did tax fraud by basically, you know, laying out all sorts of losses that were, you know, predicated on the same numbers that they just used in reverse. And it was just a crime you know, apparatus, not to mention he was involved in predatory lending and then he ultimately, the, the, the ridiculous, you know, scenario that he... Uh, Sue Deutsche Bank in 2012, Trump I'm talking about, Sue Deutsche Bank in 2012 for being a victim of predatory lending. And as we show in the con, Donald Trump is no Addie Polk. Look, the lies are getting bigger. They're deeper. They're more widespread. The entire system of media, left, right, center, all of it, anything to do with anything is using the culture wars to basically have us at each other's throats. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a good job of it. And it's predictable. And they've been doing it for now decades. I, I'd say this is like going back to the 70s. And this is like, what, f nearly 50 years later, honestly, in overdrive. And so, you know, the real concern for me is to see what's going to happen next in the economy. The economy is built on a house of cards. And it's basically run and operated by billionaire felons and multinational felons that have complete control of the system that's out of control, that basically uses all of these fraud recipes through control fraud baked into the system to do what's nothing short of mob tactics, quite frankly, and stock buybacks and all sorts of manipulation. And then ultimately, when you get into the business model and you understand what a lot of these companies are generating, a lot of them are zombie companies, and they have been since 2016, generating a bunch of mythical you know, upside on paper that the government has been buying back um, in bonds through quantitative easing. And so it's destroyed both supply and demand and the, and the rule of law. And that's the state of our country. And last night, I think, you know, we, I mean, we've seen like, honestly, guys, the, in the tech sector, I think I've heard that Apple lost $225 billion in a matter of days. I know Amazon lost like $175 billion, I think, in a day, maybe last Friday. Um, I think it wiped out all the gains going back to all of the COVID stimulus that took place. This is in a day, okay? And a lot of people like to say, well, you know, the stock market isn't the real economy. Oh, yeah, it is. There's a direct influence. It's, a, it's, a, it's an indicator. And what happens is when money dissipates out of the stock market, the liquidity dissipates in the system. And supposedly, you know, the idea is that we have this inflation because more people have more money because they have more jobs. And then we had supply chain and it's hyperinflating all of these things. When meanwhile, it's really just, you know, I think it's more, you know, the monopolization of, everything that we depend on that ultimately can, you know, use their market position to, you know, hyperinflate their products because they can and they'll push it to the limit until they can't and they'll blow it up. So, for example, all of the major billionaires in the tech sector, you know, Elon Musk, Larry, uh, a, a lot, I always screw up his last name, uh, Eliason from uh, Oracle and, and many others. And, and obviously, obviously the, the, the biggest guy of all, um, you know, uh, uh, from, uh, well, he's not the biggest guy of all from anymore, uh, obviously, um, Elon Musk is. Um, anyway, it, hand, I mean, I'm thinking about, like, you know, Zucker, uh, Zuckerberg and, uh, 
and a, a hand of, handful of others. Why am I having a hard time with the guy who was a CEO? Jeff Bezos, of course. All of these guys uh, sold stock like six months ago, I think at the height of the market. And so, you know, even if these companies lost billions of market cap evaluation now, right, they took out their cash, sold their stock, you know, at the height of the market. So they're flush. So if everything goes down, you know, let's say they're worth half as much on paper, they're still worth twice as much as they need to be based on the nature of, you know, everything else collapsing. And so then what they do, they come back and they pick it up on the cheap. And then ultimately the Federal Reserve is going to, once again, you know, shower trillions of dollars to save the economy once again. And where that where that's going to go is the financial sector, first and foremost, to prop up the stock market. And they, they've done it with quantitative easing. Zero percent interest in, they buy the bonds back. It, it's, it's all a met. And, and you're going to suffer. And you're going to get, you know, heated and into a debate and want to pull out your, you know, uh, whatever your weapon is and maybe go to civil war over being lied to by both sides. I, <laughs> I think I'm the only one willing to tell you the entirety of the truth. We're getting fucking played beyond comprehension. And it's because you don't understand how the system works. And the system is a macon. And we've got answers and we're creating a movement and we're going to create a movement that filters in the Justice Department, the Justice Party movement at www.justiceparty.us. And of course, you've got www.thecon.tv. You've got me all day at the uh, YouTube channel at Patrick Level Truth Bombs The Con. Please like and subscribe. Please watch The Con. Please spread to millions upon millions of people how the system works. It's not a history lesson. It's to show you exactly how the system works. And you're not going to believe your eyes when you understand all the pieces of it. And when you're educated and you've got this and you're willing to step up and stand up, we've got to find millions upon millions of people to be able to push against this madness that just completely showers trillions of dollars onto the ultimate um, robber barons that control the system. And all of this other stuff in the, in the culture wars between I mean, is, is, is the insurrection and, and everything that comes with it a serious issue? You bet your ass it is. Is abortion and everything that comes with it a serious issue? Of course. But they're all consequences right now of the power structure that is pissing on everybody's head telling them it's rain. Please join us. We've got to move the needle on this. There's no time to waste. Onwards and upwards.